Sensory-related neural activity regulates the structure of vascular networks in the cerebral cortex. A study by Baptiste Lacoste, Cesar Comin, Ayal Bensvi, Pascal Kaiser, Shaolin Shu, Luciano Costa, performed from the lab of Dr. Shang at Harvard Medical School. Although our brain only occupies 2% of the body weight, but actually consumes 20% of the energy, so it highly depends on the oxygen and glucose supply by the blood circulation. So the normal functioning of the neural circuits requires adequate matching between the mitochondrial need and the blood supply. Therefore, vascular patterning is critical for the normal brain function. During early embryonic development, it is well known that common guidance cues are required for both wiring the neuronal and the vascular network. However, after the birth, um, it's, it's well known that neural activity continues to fine-tune neuronal networks, but whether vascular plasticity also occurs during this period is not known at all. So this study aimed to demonstrating contributions of neural activity or sensory input to the postnatal development of vascular network in the cortex. So we are going to show you that sensory input or sensory related neural activity is necessary for the patterning of vascular networks during postnatal development of the brain. In the brain, the anatomical substrate of neurovascular interactions is called the neurovascular unit, a multicellular system composed of the endothelium, surrounded by pericytes, astrocytes, and neurons. The role of neurovascular unit in coupling increased activity to increase blood flow has been largely studied but the question remains whether neural activity also regulates vascular structure. In order to answer this question, we developed tools to simultaneously analyze vascular and neuronal modules in the cerebral cortex. As a model system, we chose the mouse barrel cortex, where the somatosensory information is treated within a cortical map in which its whisker is represented by a barrel. The anatomy of the barrel cortex is well known, particularly in layer 4, where the cortical neurons are densely packed into barrel septa, which surround clusters of thalamocortical axon. Moreover, it is well established that the neuronal situ architecture in layer 4 of the barrel cortex is subject to a high degree of plasticity when sensory-related activity is abolished or reduced. To simultaneously visualize cortical neurons and vessels in the barrel cortex, we constructed a transgenic mouse in which thalamocortical axons are genetically labeled with DD tomato, and which blood vessels are genetically labeled with GFP. In addition, immunostaining for neuronal nuclei reveals the local cortical neurons. We also developed a computational tool to process confocal images, reconstruct the vascular network in 3D, and automatically quantify vascular morphology. Using this approach, we demonstrate that in layer 4 of the viral cortex, vascular density and branching progressively increase after birth and reach a peak at P14, then from P14 to P30, vascular density and branching decrease. To investigate the contribution of neural activity to postnatal development of vascular networks, we used four different paradigms in which neural activity was manipulated in both directions, enhancement and reduction. Three of them reduce sensory input and also allow us to distinguish between the contribution of neural activity and neuronal situ architecture. We started by examining the impact of a complete deafferentation on vascular structure following whisker lesions. When the central row of whisker follicles is unilaterally lesioned at birth, formation of its cortical representation is impaired. Most importantly, our 3D vascular image analysis revealed a significant reduction of vascular density and branching in layer 4 within the deafferented row compared to the control row. No additional reduction in vascular density and branching was measured following a wider lesion. We next sought to dissect the individual contribution of neuronal situ architecture versus sensory related activity to the vascular plasticity by selectively reducing neurotransmitter release at thalamocortical synapses. This was achieved by conditionally ablating both RIM1 and RIM2 proteins from thalamocortical neurons, protein involved in the presynaptic vesicle exocytosis. In addition to confirming that neural activity is necessary for the shaping of postsynaptic barrels, which appeared absent in double mutants, we evidenced a significant reduction in vascular density 
and branching in barrel cortex layer 4 of mutant mice compared to the little mate controls. Then, for a selective reduction of sensor inputs, we performed whisker plucking, which left intact the organization of both neuronal and astroglial populations, as quantified in details. Either early or late sensory deprivation led to a significant reduction in both vascular density and branching in the deprived hemisphere compared to the control hemisphere, demonstrating that reduction of sensory-related activity is sufficient to reduce vascular complexity in the cerebral cortex. Accordingly, the number of proliferating endothelial cells appeared also significantly reduced in the deprived hemisphere. Finally, we performed the sensory enhancement paradigm by whisker stimulation, which increased neuronal activation and led to a significant increase in vascular density and branching in the stimulated hemisphere. So to summarize, in the present study, we demonstrate that three different paradigms of sensory deprivation with different impact on the neural architecture all led to a reduction in vascular density and branching in layer four of the barrel cortex. In contrast, sensory stimulation led to an increase in vascular network formation. So to conclude, our data reveal a novel aspect of neurovascular interactions by demonstrating that neural activity, which is already known to control vascular blood flow, also influences vascular structure. And thus, this implies that on top of genetic programs, the postnatal maturation of brain vasculature is also controlled by environmental stimuli.